Hey everyone, welcome back to Pawpaw's Workshop. In today's video, I want to talk about home security. And I believe that you have the responsibility to be able to provide the security in your home. And one of the best ways to do that is with a camera system. Now currently, I do have cameras around my home, but they're the wireless type of camera. Today, I want to add a camera system by Onwoot that is a hardwired system and it comes as a very complete package to be able to provide that 24-hour security that I'm looking for around my home. Here's a quick overview of everything that comes with the OnWatch security system. The only thing that you really need extra is a monitor or a TV to be able to see the screen to be able to set up everything on your camera system. And of course, if you want to have it connected to the Wi-Fi, you're going to need to be able to plug this into the modem that you have with that cable that's already provided to you. Now I want to go through and talk in detail about each of these different components. I want to talk about exactly what comes with this. Now of course you're going to get four cameras and the nice thing about this, this is a metal component. This is not your typical plastic that you see on so many. This is an actual aluminum housing. You also get the anchors. Now, if you're using brick or stucco, these little plastic anchors are probably the least expensive available. I would discard those and use a, a higher quality type of anchor. This includes the housing that provides a waterproof connection for your cables. And this is really nice to have if you're in a wet environment. You have 60 feet of the Cat5 cable for each camera. And of course, you have the receiver. Now, on the back of this, you actually have ports for eight different cameras. In addition to that, you have the port for the modem, two USB ports, an audio out, and then an HDMI and a VGA, depending on the type of TV or monitor that you have. And of course, you have the plug-in for the power. Now, this also includes the cable to, to connect this unit to the modem, and it includes the mouse to plug into one of those USB ports. In addition to that, don't forget you have the AC adapter and your power cord to be able to provide the power to the unit. Now, the first thing I want to say about this camera system, this is truly a plug and play system. Once you just connect all of these different cables to the camera and to the receiver, you can turn it on. All you need to do then is set up your password and you're in operation. You're going to be able to name the different cameras, which is very easy to be able to do, but everything is just plug and play and you're ready to operate your system. Once you have the camera system on, all you need to do then is you can adjust the camera very easily and point it to the specific point that you need to be able to have coverage for your particular camera. Now this cable itself is your Cat5 cable that already has the connector installed and is ready to just literally plug into the camera. So literally by just, just like that, your camera is connected. And you're going to be just as easy on the other end to be able to plug this into the back of the receiver. And quite frankly, it doesn't get a whole lot easier than this. Now this camera itself has an IP66 aluminum housing, which is far better than the plastic ones that you typically see on the market for your home type security systems. And this actually operates from a minus 22 degrees all the way up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, this can work indoors or outdoors. Now this housing on the back just simply unscrews so that you can easily mount it to a concrete wall, brick wall, stucco, siding, wood, whatever you happen to have around your home. Now they do provide a template that you can use should you need that. But quite frankly, in my application, I think all I'm going to do is use this metal plate itself to be able to mount it to the house. And then the camera itself will just drop back in and turn and it's mounted. So again, a very simple design that's very effective. The other nice thing about this is that your cable is completely enclosed. If you want the cable to run through here, now 
but you can also mount it this way so that the cable runs through the center and is completely enclosed. If you need to have it where it runs out the back, it has a very small opening here where this can run through. And just by placing that right into that point and then dropping this housing back on, And that's it. And then this can be mounted very close to wherever you need to have it to be able to have this cable with the least exposure. Now with this Cat5 system, this provides the power. So actually you don't need this portion. You can actually just take and plug this off right here. Snap that in so that seals that connector and just use this with your Cat5. And again, to install this, literally, you just plug it in like that and it's installed. Now, if you do need the waterproof housing, let me show you how to attach that. I want to show you just how easy it is to be able to make this connection. Literally, on this Cat5 cable, all you need to do is literally plug it in and it snaps and locks in place. But however, if you need to have this as a water-resistant connection, we're going to put on this little housing right here. And the first thing I want to do is take this little O-ring and slip it onto the end with the camera. Check to make sure that it's not twisted all the way around. That looks real good. And then on the Cat5 cable itself, we're gonna take the cap and we'll slip that on next. The rubber grommet is really convenient because it already has the cut in it to make this where it will slip over this cable very easy. And then we take the final part, this housing, slip it in just like that. Now, to make the connections, we're ready to be able to plug the camera in, slide the housing down, and this is a twist lock, just like that, and that is now in position. Take this rubber grommet, slide it down, and this goes on the inside of these little fingers, and it just easily slides into place. Take the cap, Screw it on. And the connection is completed. Very, very simple process. Now, as far as this, we don't need to have this power cable here because everything is fed through this connection through the Cat5. So for this application, we'll take and snap this plug in to be able to protect it. So this camera now, in less than two minutes, is completely ready and set up. All that's left is to take the other end of your Cat5 cable and plug it into the back of your receiver. Now for the real easy part. We have cameras one, two, three, and four. Now there's a total of eight ports here, so you can actually add four additional cameras. You have your cable here that you can connect directly to your modem and then here you can connect with the USB the mouse that comes with it and I'm going to be connecting my HDMI for my TV right here. Power is going to be here. If you have an old computer type monitor you can plug in the VGA connection at this point. So for camera number one we'll plug that in Camera number two. And let's go with camera number three. And now we'll connect camera number four and we'll plug that right in. I'm not going to plug in the modem right now. 
I am going to plug in the mouse that came with the uh, unit. And we'll plug in my HDMI cable. All that's left is the power. We'll plug in the power right there. And the back of the unit is ready. It's all set up. When you first plug in the unit, the first thing that comes up is this screen. And you need to select the language. Now, of course, I'm going to be using English, but using the mouse that's provided, I'm going to come right over here and show you. Click on the little window to open it up, and you have just tons of different languages to be able to choose from. But in my case, I'm going to use English, and then come down and hit OK. The next screen that pops up is the admin screen, and to enter the password. In the manual, it gives you the default password, which is 123456. And of course, I strongly encourage you to change the password. Now you'll notice all the cameras are already working. But let's enter the password. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we'll hit the enter. At this screen, you simply click on login. You're going to get a system message that says that the enhanced password mode has been enabled. Please set a strong password first. So we'll click OK and then we'll go through and you can change the username, put in the old password, which is the 123456, and then put in your new password, confirm it, and of course the email. Once all of that is done, then you'll click OK. Now of course I'm going to do all this off camera. Now all of that is done, the next screen that pops up is to be able to put in the time zone. Now I know that I'm in the central time zone, which is minus 6, so all I need to do is click on the drop down window and find it's minus 6. And I need to, this, let's see here, that's on the positive side, that's the other side of the world. So I need to scroll back up to find a minus 6 for the central. And there it is right there. So I'll click on the central standard time zone. And then we'll put in the um, format that we want. And I'll just stay with a month, day, and a year. You also have the option to go with the 24-hour clock or the 12-hour. I'm going to stay with the 24-hour clock. With all that set, we'll come down and hit Next. Now this is a section where we'll be connecting the modem and also downloading the app because you would have the QR code that you have at the top. But we're going to skip this section. I'm going to click on Exit. I'll come back to this later once I hook up the modem to the permanent location. So here's a first look at all four cameras. Now this is a 4K NVR cameras and this looks great. Now that little bit of flickering is due to the LED lights that I have, but you can see this is still crystal clear. Also, this is a very old TV. So the picture quality on the TV is actually a little bit limited, but I'm still very happy with this. What I'm going to do is turn off the lights and let you see the difference. With the lights off, the flickering is gone and this is only the natural light from a window itself in the shop. This is crystal clear. This looks absolutely fantastic. Now these cameras are just sitting on the table itself and I can pick them up and move them around to be able to show you the quality that you're being able to get. Now these cameras also have the night vision and they have color night vision as well. Okay, it's now dark and the only light that is in this shop is from the TV itself. And you can look at these images and they are absolutely fantastic. A lot better than I had expected. With no light in the shop other than what is coming off this TV. I want to give you an idea just how dark it is. You can see the shop on this camera quite nicely. But if I pan around with my phone, you can see that that same angle, it is completely dark. And this camera picks it up just absolutely amazing. So if I look around with this camera and actually move it to the different areas, it is doing a phenomenal job of being able to see in the dark. You also have a motion light that turns on and you can see that turn on and now it illuminates the shop. 
you can you can see how bright this is and it's illuminating this area quite nicely you see how it identifies me and it turns the light on and that's awesome guys now i have this camera set and i'm gonna walk in front of this camera so that it'll identify me as being human and it will turn on that light and you'll see the difference now this is the smart technology that's available in this system that red box actually identifies a person it will also identify uh, vehicles and of course that light comes on and now you have night vision that's in color now i already said that you have the human detection on the camera which will alert you and that is great to have and it identifies it by the red box and if you have the wi-fi connected then you can get the alerts in addition to that it also has the vehicle alerts so it can identify the different vehicles and it'll do the same thing it will highlight it you'll be able to get the alerts as far as camera placement where do you want them say you just have a basic rectangle for a house and you have a front door right there in the center for an example well you want a camera to be able to identify the points of entry so if i put a camera right here then you're going to have a field of vision to cover this side of the house if you put a camera right here you can cover this side of the house same thing if you put a camera you can cover the field of vision out here and if you have a camera here you can do the same thing but that's not the only place that you can put a camera depending on the number of cameras that you have you may want to have it where it's overlapping fields of vision and i think that's very important too let's change the shape of the house and let's make the house come out this way and then back in and let's say we still have a front door right here you're going to want that field of vision still to cover that front door and it'll cover across the yard but you'll also have if you can put a camera here then you can have the crossing field of vision to be able to cover that blind spot because that would create a blind spot right here without that camera so it's great to have the additional cameras if you can to be able to eliminate the blind spots now one of the things that you want to think about is the placement of the cameras if you only had four then figure out the best four places to put it in my situation right now i only have one camera on the front but i've placed that camera to be able to get the maximum coverage so that one camera actually covers the front door the stairs the driveway the garage the street out in front of the house it covers that whole entire area now do i have some blind spots yeah i do have some blind spots because there's only one camera as far as the backyard same thing i place that camera to be able to get the maximum coverage so that camera also covers all of the points of entry and it covers the entire backyard but having this four camera system now is going to make it where i can have much better coverage and eliminate the blind spots that i have and the other thing that this does by having two camera systems it makes it where if one system goes down you still have a backup <laughs> remember i like to have backup systems being a pilot for many years being able to have that redundancy in the cockpit was very important well i believe that in the home security as well you need to have the backup systems so i love having this four camera system to complement the cameras that i already have on the house thanks a lot for watching this video today i hope you learned something about the home security and the advantage of putting in cameras to be able to provide the extra level of security in your home this camera system by onwote is a very effective nice nice home protection system i really like it and the fact that it, it has such clear sharp images to me is a huge plus well at this point i've given you the demonstration showed you up close how to be able to assemble everything to show you exactly how easy it is now for me 
I'm going to go to the attic and run these cables.